Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another very interesting problem from one of our viewers. We have an object that's hanging from a 10 meter long rope. The object is given an, an, a sufficient amount of initial velocity, and that's what we're looking for. What is the minimum initial velocity required that it has in a horizontal direction in such a way that the object will make a complete circle, which means that when it gets to the very top, the rope still needs to be taut, needs to be straight. Of course, if you don't give it enough velocity, it'll come up here and simply just kind of fall down and not make a circular path. So what is that initial velocity required to do so? What we need to think about is what happens at the very top. At the very top, it must have enough speed so the rope stays straight, which means that the force in the vertical direction, the centrifugal force, and of course the centrifugal force, I put that within quotation marks because it's a fictitious force, but it kind of is easier to see. The fictitious force pushing it outward due to its motion, which can be written to be equal to mv squared over r, should be greater than the force pulling it downward, which is the force due to gravity, which is equal to mg. So we want f sub c, the centrifugal force, to be greater than, or it could be equal to, of course, it could be equal to, uh, than the gravitational force. So that's the requirement. Okay, let's uh, work that one out a little bit and see what we get from that. So we want the centrifugal force, F centrifugal, to be greater than the force of gravity. And so we want mv squared over r to be greater than or equal to, could be equal to, uh, mg. Notice that in this case the m's cancel out. We solve that for v, so we get v squared greater than or equal to r times g or we want v to be greater than or equal to the square root of r times g. So that's the requirement when we get to the top, and we'll just write top, that's where we want that velocity to be greater than r times g. So, now we need the energy conservation. We can say, and this is the energy initial, energy initial, and this would be energy final. So, energy initial, equal energy final. And in this case, there's no energy loss. There's no friction anywhere, so there's no energy loss. Uh, but we can write the whole equation. We can say work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy must equal potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus any energy that might be lost due to friction or wind resistance, anything like that. But right away, we realize there's no energy lost. And over here, there's no work put into the system while things are happening. If we call this zero height, if this is our reference height, h equals zero, then at the bottom here, there's no potential energy. So we can also say that the initial potential energy should be equal to zero, which means that the initial kinetic energy is one half mv initial squared, and the final potential energy would be the height gained now it gained twice the length, right? So it would be, uh, if we call this equal to h, so this is equal to h, which is equal to two times the length of the rope. So in this case, we have mgh plus, there's kinetic energy final because it must be moving in order to keep the rope, the rope tight, so it would be one half mv final squared, or we could say v final is equal to v at the top, same thing. And that is what we're, uh, no, we're not looking for that. We're looking for V initial. And V final can be, of course, replaced by what it's equal to. When I look at that equation, again, I can get rid of all the M's. I don't need to know the mass. At this point, we should multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. So let's do that. So in that way, we get V initial squared equals 2GH plus V final squared. And then we can substitute what h is equal to, because h is equal to 2 times the length of the rope, and v final squared, well v final, right here, is going to be greater or equal to the square root of rg, but squared will be greater or equal to rg right there. Okay, let's substitute, so we have v initial squared is equal to 2g, and h will be 2 times the length of the rope, plus v final, and that would be v final squared, so that would be equal to r times g. 
All right. So what we're looking for, the initial velocity required to keep the, ropes, the rope tight, and it can go all the way around. So let's plug in what these are equal to. So we have V initial is equal to the square root of 4G times the length plus R times G. Now remember, R is the radius of the circular path that would be equal to the length. So it would be L times G. And when we plug in numbers, V initial is equal to the square root of 4 times 9.8 times 10 plus 10 times G. That would just 9.8. So it's essentially 5 times 10 times 9.8. So let's go over here. So V initial is equal to the square root of 5 times 9.8 times 10, or 50 times 9.8. So V initial is equal to the square root of 490. So V initial is equal to 490. Take the square root, 22.14 meters per second. 22.14 meters per second. And of course, that is indeed the minimum velocity required. Anything less than that, the rope will not stay tight and the object will fall down instead of making a total circular path. And that is how it's done. So, if the velocity So what would happen if you end up with zero velocity at the top? The problem is you would make it to the top because the object goes like this and if the rope doesn't stay tight, the object would simply fall down. So if the velocity is anything less than this, the circular path would not be complete. It would simply fall down like this and you wouldn't get to the very top. You could not be at the top and have zero velocity. Or could you? Nope, nope, because you have to have the upward force has to be at least equal to the downward force. In other words, the centripetal force must be greater than or equal to mg or you will not make it to the very top. Okay, you calculate? No. So you can't, you can't even calculate that. Because you can't get to the top. That is it. That's the answer. Yeah, if you were to imagine this, imagine this for a moment. If you were to make it all the way to the top, think of this as a roller coaster. And think about this people sitting in the roller coaster. And so what happens is if the roller coaster doesn't go fast enough, by the time you get to the top and you're not moving fast enough so that your centripetal force is large enough, the people will simply fall out. The whole cart will simply fall out. So yeah, that's a dangerous situation. You don't want to do that. You want to have enough speed at the top so that nobody falls out. As a matter of fact, at the amusement parks, they don't play around. They don't give that as a minimum velocity. They go faster than that. They have a safety margin in there just in case anything goes wrong. And if the friction forces, wind resistance and all that, they make sure you go plenty fast at the beginning that you go plenty fast at the top so you don't even get close to perhaps falling out which is a good thing.